Fans of the Horus Heresy and Warhammer 40,000, thank you very much for joining me for an overview and analysis video of the prototype Adeptus Custodes rules for 8th edition that have just been released on the Warhammer community website, and these are written by Forge Ward. This is a much anticipated set of rules, to put it mildly. Everybody has been asking for the rules to put Forge Ward's excellent Legio Custodes range into 40k games. And here we have the first scratching of that happening with a set of prototype rules being released for a selection of units. So this is not a comprehensive rule set, but we do have a few things to look at. What I'm going to do in this video is we're going to look through the three pages that have been published, talk a little bit about the general philosophy and approach that GW are offering here before looking at the specifics of the unit. And I'm going to assess, analyze and critique how effectively I think Forge World are translating the 30k rules and flavor of that particular unit into 40k. Just a note on me today, I'm a little bit grotty and under the weather, so my voice might not sound as good as normal, <laughs> he says modestly. But if I do sound a bit off and odd or croaky, that's the reason why. It's Papa Nurgle, bless him. I'll leave a link to the article on the Warhammer community website so you can go look at it for yourself and I encourage that you do so. But without further ado, let's get into this. Let's start with the preamble. What basically they are saying here is this is a flavor of what to expect of Adeptus Custodes stroke Legio Custodes units in 8th edition 40K. And they're pitching this as a future part of an Imperial armor book similar to the indices we've already had for Forge World's Rangers to allow you to play their vehicles, units, monsters, and the rest in 40k 8th edition. So it's basically saying these are prototype rules, you should have the consent of players to use them, and although they give points values, I think they're suggesting that these are not probably suitable for competitive play at this stage, although individual tournament organisers can make that call. And the next paragraph basically says how there are certain restrictions that are being placed on using these exotic units in 40k at the moment, but that's not necessarily going to be the final way that these are presented. So those fans of the current Imperial Soup meta, well, don't worry yourself at the moment. If you can't have too many golden croutons in your soup, you may be able to add more in the future. Right, so let's move on to the next part of the article, uh, which is this section in the box and see what that says. So moving down the first page, we have this box, which is quite an interesting little, shall we say, pitch from the Forge World Rules writers. What they're asking here is for feedback from a community around the rules for these Adeptus Custodes units from Forge World in 40k. And in quite an unprecedented way, they're asking for feedback on the rules they've already created and what people think of them, which is good in a way because it's showing that they want to engage with the community. However, the detail and degree to which they are appearing open to suggestion here also does concern me a little about the strength of their own conviction in the integrity of the rules that they're creating as well. So that does bother me a little bit, I have to admit. Anyway, that said, what they do ask for is any feedback to be sent to the Forge World inbox, and you can see it's Forge World at gwplc.com, so it's very clear. And then they ask for feedback to be given with five criteria. And they also say that if you don't provide your feedback in this structured fashion, they'll discard it. And I think that's unfortunate because they're not necessarily being as open to ideas as they may otherwise be. And to be quite honest, if there's a particular bit of criteria here that you don't personally fulfill or have an opportunity to fulfill, just make it up. So for example, if you don't get a chance to play many games, but if you've got a good eye for the rules, where it says how many games you played, we'll just say 15 or something or 10 or whatever. I think it shows a certain lack of understanding to ask for all feedback in such a structured manner on a rule set because it's, it's not necessarily the right way to approach it. Anyway, that said, the five things they do ask for is as follows, the unit's data sheet, the number of games you've played using the unit, and the faction keywords used in these games, the item of war gear or ability to which your feedback relates, suggestions relating to the above unit's war gear or ability, and the rationale for these, suggestions regarding the points values for the unit and its abilities. Well, again, this final point is not necessarily relevant. You might say, well, the points are fine. However, I don't think your abilities are right. Yeah, again, a little bit kind of is it right to say that all responses to these questions fit 
in like this size five box i don't think it is anyway as i say you can put some creative fluffing around that to fill out those requirements because you shouldn't not give good feedback if you spotted something with these rules just because you know you don't think you meet one of these five requirements that forge all the setting out but interested and unprecedented as well i can't think of such a open question to the gamers with regards to rules creation ever and i'm not sure about it i think it's important to listen to feedback from your players but you should also have a strong lead on your rules creation as well i hope this doesn't turn into an exercise of design by committee for these rules and also it's kind of opening it up to extreme opinions from both ends of the spectrum you know you could get people advocating these custodians are way undervalued and they should be like buffed up to all these things or oh they're way under costed they need to be abilities reduced costs increased all that sort of stuff so how are they going to filter out those suggestions if they get a huge volume of them i think they may have created a rod for their own back with this approach we shall see Okay, so let's move on to the first of the four units. Now, I'm not going to talk about the points values specifically. They're in the article, so do go have a look at them. I'm not really bothered about the points too much because they can change and they probably will change. I'm really interested in looking at how well the character and the fluffiness, shall we say, of these units has been translated in these rules. And the first unit in these rules is the Contemptor Achilles Dreadnought. So this is one of the two custodian contemptors that Forge Orders has produced, and this is one armed with a long halberd. Let's have a quick look at this. We've got Strength and Toughness 7, 12 wounds, so it's more robust than a standard Contemptor, you would expect that. Four attacks, Leadership 9, and a saving throw of 2+. plus. Feels good to me. In the damage box, we've got 7 to 12, 4 to 6, and 1 to 3. Yeah, about average for the damage breakdown, 50 to 25%. Its movement goes from 9 to 6 to 4. Weapon skill from 2 to 3 to 4 plus, as does ballistic skill. And it's armed with a dread spear and a lastrum storm bolt or heavy flamer, so you don't get an option to mount the adrathic destructors that we get in the heresy. Fancy toys not quite allowed. I think the profile, yeah, that's fine. Good translation. Weapons profile, so the dread spear is range 36, heavy d3, strength 9, AP minus 3, and damage d3. Yeah, that feels good. The Corvus Las Pulsar, which is what this is supposed to be, is like a pocket Las Cannon. And I think actually here they've put a nice little bit of differentiation in between this smaller Las Cannon weapon and the full size one. The full size one has more range and now does more damage with D6 damage. But this version still has strength 9 and an AP of minus 3. So yeah, I like that. Heavy Flame is standard fair, so there's nothing to look at there. In melee, it's strength times 2, so strength 14. That's very potent. AP is minus 3 and damage is D6. And the minimum damage you could do is 3 with the Dread Spear. So it's very powerful. You can get between 3 and 6 damage. And then we have the Lastrum Storm Bolter. Now this is a bit different to the 30k incarnation. What they've done is given it a point of, or minus 1 say modifier. But they've taken away the Heliothermic Detonation Rule which made the custodian one so fluffy, a much less potent weapon. Looking at special rules, we've got this impaling lunge. And what this says is specific to each individual attack, not all attacks as people have tried to rules what are the heresy version of this. Every time you roll a six to hit with your dread spear, you do a mortal wound in addition to any other damage you cause. So that's nice. It gets automatic shielding, five plus invulnerable save, standard fare. And then Unyielding Ancient, which is like a fill no pain of 6+. Plus. And it'll blow up if it goes up, so that's fine. And there is also a note there to say that there are other options coming. So clearly we've got the Galatis Dreadnought. Maybe they may decide to introduce the Adrathic Destructors. We shall see. Overall, I like that. Nice fluffy transition. Every weapon system retains its unique character and has a purpose. And the stat line feels right. I like it. And moving on to the next unit, which is the Contemptor Exemplar Dreadnought. Now, this is a bit of an oddity, and I don't know why they've included it. They even note that there is no model available for the Contemptor Exemplar at the moment. I don't know why they didn't do the Galatus, you know, the other dedicated 30k Contemptor chassis. Peculiar. I suppose looking at it from another perspective, with the weapon options available, there are a number of ways you could take existing Forge Roll models and create your own contempt, shall we say. For example, buying some resin weapons and putting them onto the Betrayal at Calf Dreadnought, if you can live with it, I suppose. That's why this is no different to the Achilles. It's exactly the same in terms of its profile and abilities. Where it does have some differences are in the War Gear Department. Now, you get the option of equipping it with a Twin Laz Pulsar. So... 
exactly the same as the single mount version that was on the Dread Spear from the Achilles. So I guess you could use a twin LAS cannon to represent that. This is like your tank killer dreadnought very potent and then you also get the option of equipping it with a plasma ejector so this is kind of taking the weapon concept from the telemon heavy dreadnought of a flamethrower type plasma weapon and you can see from its stats it's suitably beastly with strength 6 minus 3 ap and 1 damage d6 shots automatically hits its target no get hot penalty sounds great I guess this seems like it's some sort of pitch to try sell some more models I think by giving people the option of a whole load of other existing contempt parts from Forge World's range and combining them either, as I say, with that plastic dreadnought or just going all Forge World, getting a standard contempt chassis, a relic or a normal one, doing a conversion. Even some of the Legion-specific ones could be made to look quite custodian-like with a little bit of work. And now let's get onto the units we're really interested in, let's be honest with ourselves, and that's the Hover Tanks. And here we have it, the Caladius Grav Tank. This is a very iconic tank for the Custodian, so let's see what the stats are like. Weapon skill is 6+, plus. strength is 6, toughness 7, 14 wounds, leadership 9, and a saving throw of 3+. Plus. For those of you not familiar, it's essentially the same stat line as a Sikaran. In the damage box, it's got a standard split, 50-50, 25-75 for the damage gradations, and movement goes from 16 to 12 to 8, ballistic skill from 2 plus to 3 plus to 4 plus, and attacks from 3 to D3 to 1. And it only has two fixed war gear options, which is a twin Iliastus accelerator cannon and a twin Lastrus bolt cannon. So stats-wise, I think a good translation of the 30k incarnation of this vehicle. Let's look at the weapons. The twin Iliastus accelerator cannon has a range of 60, heavy 8, strength 8, AP minus 3 and damage is D3. And the Lastrum Bolt Cannon is range 36, heavy 6, strength 6, AP minus 2, and damage 1. So, what do I think? Well, they've upped the number of shots on the Iliastus Accelerator Cannon. They've kind of taken the three shots per gun and doubled it and added a bit. Really potent weapon, that. Very powerful. And you'd expect it for the Custodians. The Lastrum Bolt Cannon, well, again, they've done away with the heliothermic detonation rule, so it hasn't got that nice fluffy killing power versus living things. But with strength 6 and minus 2 AP, it's in effect a pumped up heavy bolter and I guess these are prototype rules so maybe we'll see heliothermic detonation appear but there is a general defluffing of units in 8th edition compared to 7th. Let's take a look at the abilities. It has hover tank rule which affects movement same as the Astraeus, strange rule. It has a gravitic backwash rule so makes it harder to be hitting melee. It has a flare shield which grants it a 6 plus invulnerable save so again we have an example of this well what's a flare shield, what's a void shield, whatever we want it to be in terms of invulnerability. They've lost that distinct character of an individual piece of equipment. It is what it is I suppose. And then it also has enhanced aromatic alloys and basically every time you take a wound you roll d6 and on a 6 plus you mitigate it. I guess that's quite interesting when you combine that with the flare shield so there's kind of like a lot of dice rolling to do on this because you've got one invulnerable save and then another but I guess it has some protection against mortal wounds as I read it with the enhanced or romantic alloys. It's not an invulnerable save, it works against any wound. So I guess actually this makes this tank quite a tough cookie and coupled with its immense range and very hard hitting firepower, this thing's an absolute beastie, it seems to me, out of the ones we've looked at so far. It feels an authentic translation of the capabilities of a heresy unit as well. Ranges have been preserved, Defensive capabilities have been translated pretty well as well, it would seem. Moving on to the fourth and final unit, and that is the Coronas Grav Carrier. Okay, so moving finally onto the Coronas Grav Carrier. This is the Custodian's Anti-Grav Land Raider. I really like it. This is a lovely model. Looks great. And it's an interesting unit in the game as well. The only non-Lord of War transport option available to Custodians at the moment setting aside the Caron Inquisitor of the Sisters of Silence. Let's go through the stats. So weapon skill is 6 plus, strength is 6, toughness 8, wounds are 18, leadership 9 and saving throws 3 plus. In the damage box, it's actually slightly favourable because in 9 to 18 wounds you stay at full capability. It's slightly above average that. Um, but anyway, you've got movement which goes from 14 to 10 to 6, ballistic skill which goes 2 to 3 to 4 plus, and attacks which goes 3 to d3 to 1. It's armed with two weapons, 
a twin Arachnus Las Blaze and a twin Lastrum Bolt Cannon. Let's have a look at the Las Blaze because I think they've put their foot wrong with the weapon design here. So it's got two fire modes, it's got beam mode and burst mode. In beam it's got a range of 36, it's heavy 2, strength 9, AP minus 3 and damage D6. Short range Las Cannon. In burst mode its range is down to 24, heavy D6, strength 5, minus 1, AP and D3 damage. The Lastrum Bolt Cannon is exactly as per the Cardius Graf Tank. I think that they've translated the Las Blaze poorly from the Heresy era stats, and they've made changes that are dissonant with all the other changes they've made, or the other translations that they've made for the units. So in the Heresy, the concentrated fire mode was range 48, heavy 1, strength was 8, its AP was 1, and it had the Exoshock rule. Burst mode was heavy Strength 6, no AP. It was basically a twin link multi laser, if I recall that correctly. What's the problem with this weapon? Well, they've made the beam mode too strong relative to the burst mode. Basically, I mean, why would you ever fire burst mode? Unless you get a 3 plus on the number of shots, you've got absolutely no benefit from the outset. And because the strength and the AP are so much lower, then probably you're only really benefiting in terms of volume of fire until you probably roll a five or six on the number of shots. So I have no idea why they gave it a random number of shots of D6. It should very clearly have been six shots. They've up the hitting power and given it this incredibly high damage. You need to change that. Damage should just be one. Strength six, maybe minus one AP. It just needs to be like a multi-laser with lots of shots because that was the original intent. And then in general, they've messed with this gun as well because they've reduced its range from 48 and 36 respectively to 36 and 24. So another inexplicable change in how they've configured this weapon. But that does need changing in my view. Defensive capabilities are exactly the same as a Cladius. What they have done is they've introduced a little bit of difference between the two. In the Heresy this had four hull points so it was a tougher vehicle. They've chosen to represent that not just through more wounds but they've actually increased its toughness stat from seven to eight so it's as tough as a land raider. It can also carry six custodian infantry which is exactly the same as how the Heresy version works. Overall what do I think? I like the defensive side of it, I like the movement stats, all that sort of stuff, that's good but they've messed up the twin Arachnus Las Blaze cannon stats. That needs fixing, in my view. Okay then, so let's just have a few concluding remarks and thoughts at the end. Said I wasn't going to talk about the points values, but there you go, I've put them up so you can look at them. So as well, what we got, I don't know, Coronas Grav Carrier with all of its gear costs 350 points, so pretty expensive tank, I guess. These can all be changed, so I'm not that fussed about them at this point. What I'm really interested in was talking about how well the units have been translated from the Heresy of Stats into 40k 8th edition. So in general, what do I think? Well, I think overwhelmingly, the stats are good and we've got a good feel of translation into 8th. Noticeably less fluffy than the units were in Heresy. The rule like Exoshock has gone and Heliothermic Detonation has also vanished. Good to see clearly written rules around the Achilles Dreadspear and its special abilities on the charge. So thumbs up on that one. You know, Forge will need to get an FAQ out ASAP to address that in the heresy rule set. The one big misstep is the Arachnus Las Blaze weapon on the Cronus Graft Carrier. That's a terrible translation of the concept from the heresy and as far as I'm concerned it needs to be completely reworked. But aside from that, good. Other thoughts? Well it's good to see that A, Forge World have got these rules prepared and B, that they're sharing them with the community at no additional cost so people can actually play with these units. Likewise, I temper that enthusiasm with how they're proposing for feedback on these rules. As I said at the start, I think you should have a strong rules direction in terms of developing units like this. And with the way they're asking for the feedback and, and how they're asking for the feedback, just feels a little bit too much like they could be led by the community responses on these particular units. And also you could argue, well, are they trying to make up for their own shortfalls in resource in the Forge or writing team by getting the community to play test for them? That's an interesting take as well, isn't it? I suppose if you're looking in the world of computer gaming and alpha and particularly beta testing, well, that's how things work there, isn't it? Does that work in Warhammer 40,000? Not sure yet. Anyway, that said, it's better to have something than nothing. And let's hope this is the first of several sets of prototyping rules or example rules that allow us to use our 30k 
talons of the emperor in 40k and also why stop at the talons of the emperor give us a little sneak peep on the fires of cyraxis and the mechanicum that would be awesome anyway that's all i'd like to say my voice is about to give out now it is going it is starting to be lost so sorry about the slightly odd voice share your thoughts and comments as always about what i've said here what you think of the custodian rules for 40k let's get a discussion and a debate going all the different things that this has brought up yeah share that but other than that i'd just like to say thank you very much for watching i'll speak to you next time and goodbye